Hello and a very good evening and welcome to another edition of the Munster Game. The programme is broadcast on multi-channel TV through Irish Multi-Channel, Sure No Relays and Cable Link. On tonight's programme we feature the highlights from the National Football League along with a hurling quarter-final from Clare and both Tipperary Senior Hurling Semi-Finals and from Walsh Park in Waterford, the meeting of Ballygunner and Passage in the 1997 Waterford Senior Hurling Final. The revamped National Football League commenced at the weekend and Cork were returning to competitive fair for the first time since their defeat to Clare 18 weeks ago. Cork entered the match as warm favourites against Tipperary and Donald Mackey watched the action. Tipperary line out along expected lines. Conor O'Dwyer at right cornerback and Niall Kelly at fullback. Midfield partnership of Derry Foley and Michael Splann. Full forward line sees Peter Lambert, Brian Burke and Declan Brown. That's the midfielder, Derry Foley, the man from Mile Rovers. Cork team. The familiar team there, a familiar figure there of Niall Cahillan from Castlehaven. Stephen Deneen from Bantry is at wing forward. Kieran O'Sullivan at centre half forward with Aidan Dorgan at top of the left. On Mel Sports feeds the venue and Niall Cahillan of Castlehaven gets it back to the middle of the field. Back on the attack. Nice ball in towards the centre, towards Kieran O'Sullivan. Nice to picked up by wing forward Stephen Deneen. Deneen in towards the full forward position. That's uh, Joe Kavna. Kavna outside MC's midfielder. The midfielder is Hegarty. Pat Hegarty with a shot, and the referee has blown the whistle. Is this to be the first score of the game? Pat Hen referee Des Joyce of Galway awarding the penalty. Martin Quindavan facing up to the number 14, Joe Kavna. The shot not over the end line and wide. A missed opportunity by Joe Kavna. Breaking ball towards Niall Cahillan, into the middle of the field, towards Pat Hegarty. Drifting it in towards the corner, Dork and Kempfrit left it out of his hand. There is uh, Mark O'Sullivan to the centre half forward, Kieran O'Sullivan, the O'Sullivan combination. And the kick from Kieran is high and it's over the bar. Kieran O'Sullivan putting over Cork's first point. Martin Quindavan, temporary goalkeeper, right out the middle of the field, won by Stephen Deneen, Deneen in towards uh, Joe Kavner, Joe Kavner, nice ball outside towards Hegarty, Pat Hegarty with a shot and the ball in the back of the net, Pat Hegarty the scorer, combination play between Kavner and Hegarty resulted in the man from Thomas McCarthy sending the ball to the net, that's watch it again, nice pick up by Pat Hegarty, right for the kick. Martin Quinlevin, no chance. Outside the 45 metre line, this ball towards the small parallelogram, fisted inside, it's gone to the back of the net, and that could be well worth watching again. It's the second goal for Cork, two goals on the point, and certainly Cork very much dominating matters. The ball lofted it around the small parallelogram. Who got the fist to it? It could have been Kieran O'Sullivan, but the ball in the back of the net. Dropping in towards the Tipperary half forward line. Held inside, and there's another penalty here in Sunwell. Certainly a day for penalties in this football league game as Des Joyce outstretches the arms. And Tipperary have won themselves a penalty to be taken by Declan Brown. Declan Brown facing up to Kevin O'Dwyer. Declan Brown from My Rovers, the shot to the top root, left hand corner of the net. And Tipperary now trailed by a goal thanks to Declan Brown. Shot run up by Declan, a well taken penalty. Kevin O'Dwyer from O'Donovan Rosses, no chance. Dropping in towards the half forward line. Tipperary needing scores and needing them urgently. That's with the corner forward, Peter Lambert. Lambert flights the kick in towards the corner. It's picked up there by Martin Cronin, the Corkman who started the game wearing 17, fisted back there to Brian Corcoran, the, the familiar figure of Brian Corcoran. The hurler in football, and there is Derry Foley for Tipperary. Across the centre, bounce of all, falls for Declan Brown. The high kick by Declan, it looks good, and it is good. <laughs> Tipperary 1 2, Cork 2 1. The scoreboard reversed the ball in the centre of the field, is won again by Cork midfielder 
Nicholas Murphy from Carrigaline in towards the goals. Joe Kavanagh waiting for an insider. Joe Kavanagh has it actually. Missed a pass inside towards the corner. Towards Aidan Dorgan. Dorgan with a kick and it's gone over the bar. Aidan Dorgan, a member of the Cork junior team, but now on the senior side. That's Aidan Dorgan and Cork are 2 3. Tipperary are 1 2. Brian Corcoran. Kick in towards the goals. Puts the play a ball to the Cork forwards and particularly to Joe Kavanagh. Joe Kavanagh to. Murphy, Nicholas Murphy with the kick, and this one has gone over the bar. Nicholas Murphy from Carrigaline takes the pass from Joe Kavner to put Cork further ahead. Tipperary's Derry, Fo or, um, Derry Foley, Block, shot blocked down there by Brian Collins. Out to the centre, and this is Brian Corcoran. The Iron Zone, the Iron Zone man coming up the feet with the ball, flights it in towards the centre. Aidan Dorgan, good control by Aidan, turns the Passenger play right across the centre to Stephen Deneen. Deneen with the kick and the point for Stephen Deneen. The man from Bantry, 2-7 to 1-2. Cork go further ahead. <coughs> Tipperary needing a score. Maybe they get one on this occasion as the corner forward, uh, Peter Lambert, trying to work his way in towards the goals. Peter being pushed off the ball. The referee has awarded a 14 metre free for the foul on Peter Lambert. Niall Callahan there pleading his innocence. And the free is kicked over the bar. Derry, Derry Brown, the, or Declan Brown, the scorer. And there goes the half time whistle. So at half time here in the new revamped National Football League, it's Tipperary 1 3, Cork 2 7. Des Joyce sets the second half in motion. That's the Galway man refereeing this match. That's uh, Kieran O'Sullivan. Nice ball inside to Pat Hegarty. Hegarty inside to Joe Cadner. Was held, it was fouled, and it's a free and another penalty. And the referee speaking with Tipperary defender Brendan Commons, a Tipperary attacker Brendan Commons. That's Marco Sullivan from Newmarket, and that's how you take a penalty. Marco Sullivan just slides his left. Watch it again. Nice kick. Good score. Tipperary's Des Lines from Grange Walkers come on as a sub. Cork regrouping through Brian Cochran. Look to be held. Gets it across the centre to Mark Cronin. Jumping ball inside is held by Dorgan, Aidan Dorgan, into the centre. Colin Crowley, and Colin Crowley is grounded. Temporary defence there, organising with Martin Quinlevin and the fullback Niall Kelly, and the kick. Straight it's through, and it's another point for Cork. Cork are now treble scorers ahead. The ball worked there from the back by Ben Hallisey. It's in the middle, Tipperary coming forward a little bit more in the second half, or in the first half with uh, Brendan Commons in there towards the corner, towards Peter Lambert, picked up by Declan Brown. Declan flights it across the square, the ball sent to the back of the net by the number nine, Michael Splann, the man from Feathers, the county champion. Michael Splann got his fist to that one. It's 2-3 to 3 11 Kicked across by Declan Brown. Ran at the end of it, got the fist to it, and passed the goalkeeper, Kevin O'Dwyer. That's with uh, Pat Hegarty and Pat for the umpire to raise the white flag. A man from Newmarket, or the man from Tomas McCarthy, sending over another point. Already on the attack, that ball given easily away to Brian Corcoran. Brian Corcoran out to Pat Hegarty. Towards the corner, towards Joe Kavner. Niall Kelly with him. Kavner waiting for support to come, and there's Stephen Deneen there. Stephen with the kick, and Stephen with the point. So easy for Cork, so easy for Stephen Deneen. Mm -hmm. 
It's been dominated by Cork. Nicholas Murphy in the middle. Derry Foley. For Brendan Cummins. Joan Starr, Brendan Cummins. Coming up against the other Joan Starr. But has the shot next to the back of the net. Brendan Cummins, the scorer. I was going to say he was coming against Brian Corcoran. But Brendan took the chance, took the opportunity and scored the goal. Solo effort inside. Cork, a uh, defence standing off him somewhat. The challenge is coming in. Brendan taking the responsibility. He knows how to block them. Now he knows how to score them. That's Brendan Cummins. Brendan Cummins from close to the sideline. In towards Brian Burke. Brian Burke in towards Derry Foley. Foley with the right for the kick. And Foley with the launch. And Kevin O'Dwyer there a bit annoyed with his defence. It's 3 13 to 3 4. The gap is narrowing. Maybe the time is ticking away. And Corks come forward again to John Davis. In towards the corner forward position. Fisted over the bar. That one looked to come in from Stephen Dineen. The other wing, it's uh, Colin Crowley dropping in the middle of the field and the referee awarding the quick free. Quickly taken free by Foley. Bowers not moving fast enough to it. The ball coming off the cornerback. Owen Sexton. Dropping inside. Brown getting it into the centre. And that's the corner forward. Peter Lambert across to Brian Burke. Brian Burke with the shot and it's gone over the bar. It somehow skidded off his boot, but he got the point. 3.17 to 3.5. The scoreboard tells the tale. Brian Corcoran, very much part of the Cork football team and the hurling team as well as we watch Owen Sexton across to the opposite side of the field towards Don Davis. Don Davis up the centre, calling for it there. Uh, Marco Sullivan sending it up towards the corner, towards the wing forward. Colin Crowley, Crowley into the corner forward, Aidan Dorgan, Dorgan into the man who has come on the fresh pair of legs, Michael Harrington, Michael Harrington into the other sub, uh, Crowley or Davis, Don Davis to the back of the net. Good combination play for Cork's fourth goal. Watched again, running into position, Don Davis, six metres out, defenders, no chance, goalkeeper upended. And there goes the final whistle, the final score here from the sports field in Tonmel, Tipperary 3-5, Cork 4-17. No, well, next here on the Munster game, we switch to hurling and turn our attention to the quarterfinals of the Clare Senior Hurling Championship. Cusick Park in Ennis provided the setting for that meeting of Aero Og and O'Callaghan's Mills. It turned out to be a dramatic contest and Mal Keevney witnessed the action for the Munster game. A strong contender for a young player of the year, Colin Lynch links up with Declan Tobin, the team captain in the Aero Oak midfield pairing. Sean Lyne is the centre half forward of the team, while the full forward line is quite strong, comprising of Stephen McNamara, Carly Egan at full forward and Billy Piggott. P.G. O'Connell, well, he occupies his customary position of left half forward on the O'Callaghan Mills team. Jim Cleary is named at centre half forward, while Brenda McNamara moves in to occupy full forward position. Jim Maroney will be at centre half back. He also captains the team in a half back line that is also made up of Noel Nash and Michael DC. O'Callaghan Mills playing left to right in the opening half at Cusick Park, dropped in by DC, held at the goal line by Brian McAllister. And McAllister did well. The sun is quite strong and it's into his eyes. Once again now, Donald Cooney losing out on this occasion towards Barry Keating. Keating playing it intelligently inside and superbly linking up with Colin Lynch. Lynch firing it low towards his full forward line. This is good play. And the free has been awarded to Cahal Egan by the referee this afternoon. Nearly scoring opportunity for the side based in Ennis. Here comes to Free, smacked in between the uprights, and it's quite good as well to Aero after a very encouraging start through Carl Egan at full forward. Cameron Mills trying to respond from that score by Egan. They're playing it out rather than in on this occasion. Final strike there from Donald Cooney, setting Brian Madden on his way. Crossing it ahead of Paddy Gilfoyle, straight across the goal. What a superb point! But really that was a very, very difficult angle. Almost on the end line. It's over the crossbar with the wing forward. 
And I'm sure very happy with that score. John Russell of Aero Oak playing it towards midfield. And coming out to greet this is Fergus Flynn. Flynn dropping it in towards the goal of Peter Calvary, and it's over the crossbar. So Aero Oak were the warm favourites for this game, counting for a point through Declan Tobin, 13th captain. Paul Shannon moving out from the defence as far as midfield. Now this is Fergus Flynn dropping it in towards the goal. And it's over the goal line. In fact, it's a goal. Well, how about that? Peter Carmody has dropped it. And the goal will be credited to the wing forward, Fergus Flynn. Well, really, that's a stroke of luck for Aero. Dropped in. Here we see it again. Peter Carmody almost had it cleared. But then it spun from his possession and just about over the goal line. Carl Egan was also quite close to the action. Aero Oak riding high now this occasion. Trying to push themselves forward, which they do with centre half forward Sean Lyon outside now towards Stephen McNamara, the sharp shooting McNamara right into the over the pass bar. So Aero Oak helps greatly by that goal. Now they've established themselves with a five point lead. Aero Oak coming inside the 65. Corner forward Billy Piggott seeking and finding Cahill Egan has a few yards and Aidan Moroni the shot from way out the wing in towards the goal and it's found the range as well Cahill Egan a very good pull forward and certainly making his mark this afternoon Callan Mills clearing it towards midfield it's broken favourably now for Colin Lynch though on this occasion he loses out support is behind with John Russell up from the ground stroke and now it's with Fergus Flynn the goal scorer swinging it in towards the goal and yet another point for him Fergus Flynn was certainly striking all the right courts this afternoon at QZ Park in Ennis Hero Oak beginning to race away with the title challenging there is Noel Nash but it's an Hero Oak defence there clearing it up towards their attacking area where Donald Cooney however for O'Callaghan Mills intercepts and finds support outside the wing with Michael DC. This is a long effort by Michael DC down as far as the semi-circle battered away there by Francis Corey but O'Callaghan Mills have the shot into the goal and it's over the crossbar that pulls one back but one feels that they need a few more scores and certainly the man that may provide them is Brian Madden. This is Donald Cooney dropping it short two against one and it's the players that are there in numerical advantage that win it, or do they? Because winning it back is Quinta McNamara. McNamara in lead support, but not beginning to find it at the moment. Still inside that 30 meter line. Now it breaks outside. This is Jim Cleary, shot half black down. Brendan McNamara has it. He also has a few yards, thought about the hand pass. He can't catch it again. Strong challenge there from fullback Francis Corey. And the referee certainly no hesitation in awarding the free. Here comes the shot, he's going for the point and he's found it as well. Another score for Brian Madden. One feels that O'Callaghan Mills will certainly need a goal to come back into the wreck. All here over the moment. O'Callaghan Mills fighting their way back. Brendan McNamara now up against Francis Corey, the full back, turning the right hand strike and he's found the target as well. So between Brian Madden and Brendan McNamara, there's still plenty of firepower in the attack. Matthew McMahon and Matthew McMahon Jr. Well, just surveying the action at Cusick Park. So Callan Mills now need a good second half performance to reach the semi-final of the Clare Senior Hurling Championship. A little bit of stalemate at midfield. Sean McCarthy is involved in the action. On this occasion it's Michael DC playing it forward. This is Noel Nash for O'Callaghan Mills, dropping it towards the goal. The goalkeeper pats it, and it's over the crossbar. The shot that caused some worry to Brian McAllister, the goalkeeper for Ear Oak. Still seven points dividing the teams. Ear Oak playing left to right in the second half, moving into attack on the 20 metre line. This is a good strong run by the midfielder, Colin Lynch, and he finishes it very, very well for the point. Building it up front defence, Michael DC swinging this one in towards the goal, it's held on the small parallelogram, here comes the shot, blocked down by a body of the defender, that was Paddy Gilfoyle. And still challenging here now we have Brendan Noonan, this is Noonan looking for support with Kevin McNamara, the whistle has sounded, 
and it looks likely to be a penalty for O'Callaghan Mills to bring them back into the contest. They certainly need to score this. Brian McAllister. Here comes the full forward McNamara shot. And it's over the crossbar. Oh, he totally missed that effort to the full forward. And it only winds up being a point. But really O'Callaghan Mills need a goal. Their own full back line under pressure. Francis Corey in particular. Now this is Gwyneth McNamara. He too has been fouled and yet another free has been awarded. Left behind for Brian Madden to take. PJ O'Connell player yet to come into the action. This is Madden. He's striking it. The angle is tight, but he's matched the effort. So Brian Madden, well, his retrial this afternoon is fairly healthy. Seven points between the teams at this particular moment. On the 45, O'Callaghan Mills still not out of the hunt. They reckon at least. This one in, dropping in. And another point for Callum Mills. And full forward Brendan McNamara certainly making up the disappointment from his penalty strike moments ago. Nicely inside to Brendan McNamara again. Played back. Here could be an opportunity for Brendan Noonan. Up against Paddy Gilfoy. Low shot. It's saved. McNamara. It's on the goal line. Is it still there? It is. And now it's a goal. It's a goal played by full forward Brendan McNamara. And three points between them. Here it comes again, a goal mouth for Lee. Involved in the action, Brendan Noonan. He couldn't put it past McAllister, but the man that finally did was Brendan McNamara. Suddenly only a goal separates the teams. But Aero O trying to open up a four-point march at this particular stage with Barry Keating shot into the goal. And that's a good point, an important score as well. So four points, Aero O enjoy the advantage. And this is an unsavoury incident down to the goal to our right. Here we watch it again. The ball was dropping in. It went over the crossbar. The goalkeeper was Peter Carmody. But he was certainly impeded. Also involved was the full forward. But in the end, he's ordered off the corner forward. And so Billy Piggott will play no more part in this clear senior hurling quarter final. Here at Oak, down to 14 men. O'Callaghan Mills coming forward with P.G. O'Connell. He's been brought down certainly impeded and so things becoming a little heated at the moment and the referee trying to order well in fact he's ordered the wing back off so Sean McCarthy also has been sent off this is quite bizarre it's 13 man era oak to finish out the contest Brian Madden striking it between those uprights and narrowing the margin to just one score certainly within striking distance are O'Callaghan Mills Tommy Corbett centre half back and he's lost out this occasion that's a thundering shot all the way down the field coming across to challenge is Brendan McNamara also there for Air Oak is Paddy Gilfile but this is McNamara inside it comes out towards Portic McHugh cut away from him PJ O'Connell is trying to poke it forward McHugh against the goalkeeper it's a goal I don't believe it O'Callaghan Mills have got a goal oh this is quite sensational what a dramatic finish to the game the teenager, Portic McHugh, has put it past Brian McAllister on the goal. McAllister came out to sweep it clear, but challenging strongly was McHugh. The end result, a goal. What can the Oak do now? Jer Maroney, the captain, all the way out the field, in towards the goal, but on this occasion it's gone to the right and wide. What a marvellous comeback, and it's all over. O'Callaghan Mills have won the match. They've beaten Aero Oak. And some... Unfortunate scenes at the end of the contest as the referee is scored off the field. And O'Callaghan Mills, the winners by a point, 213 to 115. After a long campaign, Tipperary reached the semi final stage in the Senior Hurling Championship at the weekend. John Lahey figured prominently with the Mullinahone side, which cross sticks with Holy Cross Ballycahal at Thurless. Donald Mackey was our commentator at Semple Stadium. Holy Cross Valley Cahill contest this semi final with a very unchanged team from the game against Borussia Lee. Philip O'Dwyer at full back, Timmy Leeson at centre half back, Donald Ryan and Willem Ryan. The Ryans man the midfield positions for them. Michael Lee at centre half forward with Declan Quinlan at full forward. All in all, a very experienced team. <laughs> CJ Kickham's Mullen Mahone, the home of the Lahays. Noel at centre half back. And John at centre half forward, Brian O'Mara and Eddie Carey at midfield. The experience of Brian O'Mara vital with Pat Croke at top of the left. Liam O'Connor is our team captain and he's the goalkeeper. Proud 
Quite a sizable crowd here for this semi-final in Semper Stadium. The pitch looking in excellent condition. Hurley crossed Billy Cahill in the green and white. CJ Kickham's one in the hole. In possession at the moment. The ball flicked out towards the corner. Towards Massey Tobin. Massey Tobin tries a low shot. It's gone to the back of the net. Massey Tobin the scorer. An excellent start for Mullen Mahone. It's a goal and a point for Mullen Mahone. And Holy Cross yet to register a score. The ball flicked to the corner forward. Tobin. Bendick. Lift. Shot. To the back of the net. A hop in front of the goalkeeper. And Michael Ferncombe couldn't stop that one. Holy Cross Belly Cahill, remember the mid Tipperary champions? They defeated Bohor uh, Lahan Duella in the final. Mullen Mahone, the team from the south of the county. And it's there keeping on the pressure as the ball is driven in towards the goal. It's high and it's gone over the power. And certainly Mullen Mahone has opened the game very, very brightly indeed. After about eight minutes of the first half, they lead by 1 3. That's John Dahi with the free, and that's another point for Mullen Mahone. Whether it be Lehi or Lehi, he's performing well. It's 1 4 to no score. Dropping ball on the far side of feed. Holy Cross must get into the game quickly. Drifted out towards the centre. And that looks to be the first opening score for Holy Cross. From the midfielder, Donald Ryan. Sorry, it's the second point for Holy Cross. It's 1-4 to two points. Breaking in the middle of feed. Donald Ryan batting for it. One there by Michael Lee. So influential in the game against Borussia But so influential for Holy... For... One of the home is John Dahi, dropping it around the square, picked up by Edward O'Brien. O'Brien half hits that shot, rating back to cover there is Declan Ryan for Holy Cross Valley Cal. Going over there is Edward O'Brien for one of the home. Only sends it out to the far side of the feed. That ball looked to be very close to being picked off the ground by Pat Croke. He tries to shot from a very acute angle and he sends it over the bar. It's 1-5 to two points. It's been all one of the home. And certainly the crowd enjoying the opening stages of this game from a one of the home point of view. Holy Cross on the attack, towards the goals, towards the collided end, and it's gone over the bar. Tonto Lanigan putting it between the posts, or is it Michael Lee? It's maybe Michael Lee. Driven in towards the centre, John Dahi. Yes, centre half forward, 11 on the back, but where is he now? He's up defending. Tries to get the ball out towards the middle. It's won by the wing back, Kieran Bohan. Or Kieran Bohan kicks it out. He put it in front of football. The referee has penalised the Holy Cross man, I think. He has penalised the Hummel and the Holman, so it's a free end to Holy Cross's Davy Burke, and he's sent it over the bar. Four points. It's still a, quite a substantial lead for Hummel and the Holm. Sideline cut, taken on the far side of the field by John Dahi, in towards the centre. One of them into the field by David Ryan, or Willem Ryan, the com Ryan brothers combining, getting it into the centre towards Michael Lee, racing away from the centre half back, Noel Lehi. Still Michael Ryan, hooked as he hits that one by Kieran Bohan, gets it back there to the middle too, no Lehi. Up towards this corner of the field, breaking ball is won by the cornerback Dixon Ryan for Holy Cross. Gets it out to the corner, a race for possession, a sod looking in excellent condition here in Simple Stadium as we will expect it. David Burke with a shot and this one has gone over the bar and David Burke getting a very crucial score as it's a goal between the teams in Simple Stadium in the hurling semi-final. Breaking ball is one of the middle of the field, again by they went from uh, one of the home across the centre it goes. Nice pick up by the corner forward, Massey Tobin. Massey who scored the opening goal and now he's got a point. That's Massey Tobin. So at half time here, it's actually Paul Kelly who's got it. At half time here, it's Mullen Hone, 1 7, Holy Cross, 6 points, and Tommy Barrett replaces the debits on the field. One of them in the field, across the centre it goes for Tony Dalton, for. Mullen the home gets it across there towards Damien Bahar, racing away. The wing forward, getting the space in front of him to open up, working it inside, getting there across the centre towards Paul Kelly, tries to work it inside. Miscue there by the defence of Holy Cross, won by Mullen the home, keeping on the pressure, breaking ball inside, and maybe the goal here. Paul Kelly has the shot, it's inside still, and it's saved by the goalkeeper, Michael Fern, come back outside, and this ball has gone over the bar, and certainly the pressure persistence there by Holy by Mullen the Hone keeping them very much in touch as we watch the long shot there by Michael Lee turning inside the post pulling back the deficit somewhat five points the lead for um, Mullen the Hone that's from Donald Ryan in towards the goals the goalkeeper Liam O'Connor the captain has it safely in the hand and the man from CJ Kickham's Mullen the Hone the captain of the team Pucking the ball out towards the centre. Lee got to it. Lifted instead to Noel Ryan. 
across the centre, flicks it in towards the far side of field. Holy Cross needing the scores at this stage in the game, keeping the pressure on, getting it out there to 21, who's Brendan Ryan. How many Ryans in the Holy Cross team? There's a lot of them. As the ball breaks in towards the corner, that's David Burke with a low shot of the ball in the back of the net. David Burke, the scorer, came in from a very acute angle, and now there's just a point separating the teams. Watch the number 13. Or should I say the 15, David Burke, and he has sent it to the back of the net. Holy Cross coming more and more into the game as the game progresses. Mullen Ahone trying desperately to stay in front, and that ball is sent over by Thomas Cahill. Or is it the wing forward, it's Damien Maher. The free with John Lahey. In towards the centre, blocked inside by Brian O'Mara, to Brian O'Mara, hooked on this occasion. Holy Cross by the Cahill, under a little bit of pressure. That's with the wing forward, Paul Kelly. Paul Kelly with the shot and Paul Kelly with the point. A two-point lead from Mullen the Hone. They look to be closing, Holy Cross came back, but they are coming back themselves now. That's Mullen the Hone, breaking in the centre of the field. With uh, Kieran Vaughan, I think, tried to work it inside. Good work there by Paul Kelly, very much the dominant force of the Mullen the Hone attack, and Paul has sent over another delightful point to push Five points in it here in Central Stadium. Referee for this game is Michael Cahill from Kilowan McDonough's. One of them is in the field by the wing back Paul Cahill. Paul racing away from a very acute angle, tries the shot. The wing back, yes, he's got his name on the scoreboard. Is the game out of the reach of Holy Cross? Are we to see one of the holes in the county final for the very first time as David Burke sends the ball in towards the corner forward, No Ryan. In there with the wing forward, Tony Tonto Lennigan has difficulty in lifting it, gets it outside eventually, and Holy Cross still coming forward with the corner forward, John Ferncomb. Ferncomb inside the loose band, maybe a score for Holy Cross. Tries to work it across the centre, maybe over elaboration. The ball sent by Ferncomb to the back of the head. John Ferncomb, the scorer. Good combination played there between himself and Tom Dwyer. And Ferncomb sending the ball to the back of Liam O'Connor's net. Holy Cross right back in the game. It's time on their side. And there is Paul Kelly for Mullen Ahone. There also is Paul Cahill for Mullen Ahone. On his knees over on the far side of feet. And away comes Holy Cross. Tonto Lennigan trying to keep that ball moving successfully in towards the corner. Racing away is the corner forward, David Burke. David coming in to make an angle for himself, gets it across to Noel Ryan. Noel Ryan maybe going for the goal. A loose man outside, a shot and the ball in the back of the net. A good score for uh, Holy Cross, made by Noel Ryan and passed it outside to a colleague. And the sides are level. Tony Tonto Lennigan, the man to put the ball in the back of the net. About three minutes to go in this county senior hurling final. Lady Carey for Mullen Ahone to put his side two points ahead. It's 117 to 3 9. And Lady Carey going back to position. Mullen Ahone still on the attack with the corner forward. Massey Tobin tries to work it inside. Holy Cross Belly Cal defending very, very well. Nicely picked up by the man who's come on as a sub. And that's uh, Brendan Ryan. Brendan out towards the corner. And it's nicely picked up on the far side there by Paul Kelly. Trying to make an angle for himself, cuts inside the 14 metre line, shot blocked down, still on the 20 metre line. Paul trying to cut in field, Paul with the shot, and this one has gone over the bar, and Muller the home. Yes, they look to be on their way to a county final for the first time ever. The team of John Lehy and company as Muller the home putting on the final pressure in the final few minutes. And that's another good point for Muller the home to give them a four point lead and certainly Holy Cross will need a goal at this stage in the game to come right back into it. It's time ticking away for Holy Cross as David Brock sends the ball right across there to Noel Ryan. Noel the next for the goal for the score. He gets the point and Mullen Ahone look to be underway. There goes the final whistle. Mullen Ahone winning by three points. Well done to referee Michael Cahill. Excellent referee here in this county senior semi-final in Tipperary. Mullen Ahone reached their first ever senior hurling final. An attendance in excess of 7,000 turned up at Walsh Park for the Waterford Senior Hurling Final involving Ballygunner and Passage East. Donald Mackey was in Walsh Park for the Monster Game. Ballygunner defeated Mount Sion by five points in the semi-final. A very simple side with Stephen Frampton, Fergal Hartley and Rory O'Sullivan excelling all season. Billy O'Sullivan and Paul Flynn are the forwards very much in forum. Paul scored 10 points in the semi-final and Billy accounted for 2-2 of his side's total of 2-16. Sean O'Sullivan manages the side. 
Passage had three points to spare in their semi-final over this more. The Cullinans, Sean and Eamon, are excellent defenders and marshal a tight defence in front of goalkeeper Ray Barry. Anthony Fitzgerald and James Hanahan are accurate forwards, both from placed and general play, and take a lot of watching by the Gunners' defence. Their manager is Michael Connors. Referee John Michael Kelly sets the Waterford County final in motion as Tom Fives has sent the ball up towards the corner. Nicely picked up there by the corner forward, trying to make an angle for himself, sent it in towards this corner of the field. Can this be the opening score from Bally Gunner from Declan Fitzpatrick? It's gone over the bar and Declan has opened the account after 16 seconds. Hardy pulling on the far side of the field with Seamus Keating, getting it into the centre, cleared up by Fergal Hartley, wearing the red helmet, sending it up towards the corner, and the cornerback is Bill Brian Carey, half hits that shot, flicked outside him, as Passage tried to build it from the back, Bally Gunner come from the forward division to Billy O'Sullivan, Billy O'Sullivan has the point, and that's the second point for Bally Gunner. <laughs> Fergal Hartley trying to work it out, and the referee penalises the Bally Gunnerman for holding the stick, so it's a free in to passage. Anthony, Tony Fitzgerald to put the sides level one more time, and Tony has done that from a free. Two frees for passage, one from Edmund and one from Tony. That's the Fitzgerald. Dropping on this side of field. Play one of them in layer by Liam Whitty. Tries to get away from the wing back, Liam Carey. One by Tom Fives. Nice ball in towards the corner. We haven't seen much of Paul Flynn, but here he comes. Paul Flynn, the wonder man from Bally Gunner, tries a low shot. It's blocked by the cornerback, Brian Carey. Very close to the goalkeeper. Blocked by the goalkeeper. Third attempt. The shot, the ball to the back of the net. Paul Paul the scorer. Let's watch that one again. The first shot blocked by the goalkeeper. The second one blocked by the defender. And eventually sent to the back of the net by Paul Power. Ball breaking in the centre there, won by Rory Walsh. Rory Walsh not getting it, going back there to Paul Fitzgerald. Breaks inside, out comes goalkeeper Ray Whitty. Ray coming out of the goals, hand passed it out, and completing the clearance is Fergal Hartley. Sean Cullinan. Up to the corner, one on the far side of the field by Sean Lyons and getting it out to a more advantageous position as uh, Bally Gunner come forward. Paul Flynn gets the ball eventually. Tries to get inside the wing back, Liam Carey. Flynn with the shot and Flynn with the point. <laughs> 13 minutes gone. Paul Flynn to try for his third point. Bally Gunner's fifth. It's 1 5 for Bally Gunner. Three points for passage. Paul Flynn, point number three. Making, may come back eventually to Paul Connors, close to his midfielder, Paul Fitzgerald. McGarrett with the shot, his shot is blocked down the middle of the field by Fergal Hartley, captain of Bally Gunner, working it out towards the sideline. Advantage by the referee and good advantage for Paul Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald with a shot from her way out the field and it looks good and it is good. That's the first point from play for Passage. Ashley Ash, Tom Fives, Eamon Cullinan tried to keep tabs on uh, Paul Flynn, looked to over carry that one but got away with it, Brian Carey, good delivery by the cornerback up to the opposite corner for Gary Cullinan has changed corners, over inside it goes and coming out to clear it is Sean Lyons the wing back half back position and the referee penalises the central defender there for a swing from behind a free into passage. Anthony Fitzgerald to put point number six on the board and he's fourth, it's gone over and it's Anthony Fitzgerald, four points Passage have six, Bally Gunner have one six, that goal separating the sides, it came from Paul Power nicely picked up on the opposite side of the field, looks like Liam Carey racing in as the midfielder, Paul Fitzgerald across to this side of the field, coming under the man's feet there, Paul Connors, the captain not leading by example I must say has difficulty in getting the ball out the field. Bally Gunner get it out. Race of possession. Mick Mahoney and Liam Carey. Mahoney. Tom sends it in towards the centre. A little bit of pushing inside and uh, a pull there on Paul Flynn. 
the referee is racing in the goalkeeper I think is going to be spoken to Paul Flynn is on the deck Twenty metre free, twenty-two and a half minutes gone. Paul Flynn tries not for the goal, gives it plenty of height and gets the point. And that's point number five for Paul Flynn. Good control by Rory Walsh. Inside to Paul Long. Paul Long bearing down the goals. Blocked there by Paul Connors. Shot. Saved. A great save by goalkeeper Ray Whitty from the stick of the wing forward and it's still keeping passage in the game out it comes to the centre of the field Paul Fitzgerald coming across together getting across to his midfield colleague Edwin Fitzgerald sends it low and Whitty has it again that excellent goalkeeper Ray Whitty sends the ball towards this side of the field nicely held on this side of the field by Seamus Keating Seamus being hooshed off the ball but the ball is coming very close to the sideline gone over the line Good sideline cut, sent right in towards the centre and well held there by Edmund Fitzgerald. Dropping it out into the centre. Fives coming across to get it, not bringing it with him. Back to the side of feed. Frampton steadying himself, sending it up towards the corner. Nice drill inside there for Tony Carroll. Missed one already, can he score this one? Tries the shot and this one is successful. Tony Carroll the scorer. Octave Lina, Sean Cullinan. Good ball inside. Nice control, Paul Long. The shot comes off the post and it's gone over the bar. Paul Long, the scorer. Can there be a score on here for passage? Well controlled by the corner forward, but one there by the fullback, Niall Warren coming out of a ruck of players and gets it out a little bit only out to the middle of the feed towards Edmund Fitzgerald tries to pass it out to a colleague Paul Long Paul Long across the centre over elaboration by passage will be eventually cleared out no not on this occasion as Bally Gunner living dangerously tried to work it out the field somehow and the referee penalises the Bally Gunner man for a high challenge there and it's a free in Anthony Fitzgerald to put over his six point and passages number nine Anthony Fitzgerald, so simple for Anthony. The second half is underway in the Waterford Senior Hurling Final and at half time Ballygunner led by 1-8 to 9 points. But his passage to our first into the attack in the early stages of the second half to Paul Connors and through the centre half forward Rory Walsh. Nicely blocked inside by the goalkeeper, is there a goal on here for passage, the ball has gone to the back of the net, yes it is. And the man to get it, I think, is the man jumping for joy. It looks like Paul Long. I may be wrong in that one. Let's watch that one again as the ball was sent in by Rory Walsh and finished to the back of the net, eventually, I must say, by Paul Long. Shortest puck out. Falls for passage. That's Barry Walsh making very good run. It is a good one and it is a point. Barry Walsh, the scorer came out from the middle of the field and send that ball straight and through. There is Fergal Hartley. Dropping it inside, good defending by Eamon Cullinan. Breaking outside to Paul Flynn and Paul with the shot and that's just a point difference between the teams. Paul Flynn from a very acute angle. The sides are level as Paul Power sends a great ball in towards the goals. Come off the corner back. It's still in there. A shot of goal. Barry Gunners. Paul Flynn put the ball in the back of the net. Maybe that's well worth watching again as the crowd come on their feet. The ball drilled in by Paul Power. Blocked by a defender. But Paul Flynn pounced and sent the ball to the back of the net. The ball right out to the centre it comes. Pulled it on the ground. Into the wing forward position, Tony Carroll racing away, sending this one high and it's gone over the bar, Tony Carroll has scored his second point, one in the first and now one in the second. Long free, drilled in and drilled over the bar, that's a very good 
Executed point by Paul Fitzgerald. That's the two midfielders now getting their name on the score sheet. <laughs> Bally Gunner coming again. That's uh, Stephen Frampton. Shot half blocked down. May work out nicely for the midfielder. It does for Liam Whitty. Gets it outside to the wing forward. Tony Carroll. And the, ball, the bar coming there in the way as that ball is sent over by Paul Flynn. But certainly... Tony Carroll had the word goal written over that shot, but Paul Flynn picked up the pieces and sent it over the bar. Dropping it into the centre, held in the middle of the field, as Billy O'Sullivan races away. Billy O'Sullivan tries for the score, sends it in, the goalkeeper gets a stick over, it's gone over the bar, Billy O'Sullivan. Ray Whitty tried to block it, but Billy O'Sullivan has scored his second point. One on the far side of feed by Stephen Frampton. Frampton sending a long ball inside. The goalkeeper watches. Gone over the bar. Stephen Frampton, the scorer. That ball came from Rio Hall in the middle of the field. And Stephen Frampton has got his name on the scoreboard. And now we have a very unsavoury incident in the passage goals. As that ball has gone over the bar. A few players there took the game into their own. The scoring court. Phones, computers, hi-fi, TV, video. Kitchen, white goods. We've even got the garden covered. All at prices only a Flaw Griffin Superstore could give you, with all the big brand names. And after sale service, that's second to none. Who else could bring you all this but Flaw Griffin Superstore, Parnham Place, Cork. At Cashman's Betting is fun. At Cashman's Betting is fun. Place a bet at Cashman's Bookmakers. Whatever your sporting interest. Politics or dog racing, soccer or GAA, horse racing, snooker or golf. You can be assured of competitive prices and top service. The betting is best at Cashman's. There's a branch near you. Betting is fun at Cashman's, the most competitive bookmakers in the world. The 1996 Brewing Industry International Awards. 36 head brewers were asked to blind taste test different stouts from around the world. Which one did they settle on? Hello there and a very good evening and welcome to another edition of the Monster Game. The programme is broadcast on multi-channel TV through Irish Multi-Channel, Sure No Relays and Cable Link. And on this evening's programme we feature highlights from the Monster Club Hurling Championship, the All-Ireland B Football Final and the Nina Co-op Under-16 Hurling Tournament. We begin with the Munster Club Hurling Championship. Waterford champions Bally Gunner were boosted by the return of Paul Flynn for their replay with Sarsfields at Walsh Park. Awaiting the winners was a place in the semi-final against the Clare champions with home advantage. Donald Mackey travelled to the southeast for this eagerly awaited meeting. Bally Gunner, following their fine win in the Waterford Championship and a draw with Sarsfields on the last time out, show an unchanged side. Stephen Frampton, Fergal Hartley and Rory O'Sullivan on the half-back line. Liam Whitty and... Tom Fife at midfield, Mick O'Mahony on the 40 with Darrow Sullivan and the ace sharp shooter back after suspension, Paul Flynn at top of the left. The Sarchfields with the familiar face of Teddy McCarthy operating on the 40, talking there to Conor O'Leary who is operating on the half forward line. John Considine operates the centre half back with team captain Pat Smith at full back. Tyg Murphy mans the goal. All in all a very experienced team and a great clash of two champions expected here. As the puck out comes, sent up along the opposite side of the field. Breaking ball on the far side of the field is won by Sars. And they're playing in the blue and white. The Waterford champions playing in the red and black. And the foul there on Tony Carroll. The referee waving play on. The referee is Willie Barrett in towards the corner. The high shot is gone inside. The umpire looks for the white flag. And that's a good score. It's the second point for Valley Goddard. A good passage of play there involving Tony Carroll. Dropping in towards the half-forward line, Teddy McCarthy trying to get a stick to it. Breaks out towards this side of the field, nicely picked up by John Murphy. John sends it in and he has sent it out over the end line and wide. The forward there disputing it, but the umpire now goes for the white flag. Uh, change the decision there and that's the opening score for the Cork champions. Breaking on the, broken on this side of the field. 
taking it back in towards the centre with John Murphy sending across to the opposite side of the field and Waterford come at it again through Stephen Frampton shot half blocked down tries to get it inside towards Teddy McCarthy the opposite corner there is Gerard Murphy Hardy battling in there and Stephen Frampton gets the boot out, out to the middle of the field it goes nice pick up by the wing forward Tony Carroll racing away from would-be uh, markers across the opposite side of the field good vision to pick up on the opposite side of the field looks like Tom Fife's over there but the ball is sent in towards the corner in end to end hurling here in this um, sub championship that's the shot there by Billy O'Sullivan blocked inside and it's gone out at the expense of a 65 a good shot by Billy O'Sullivan from about 20 metres out saved by the goalkeeper Tyke Murphy and deflected out at the expense of a 65 by Pat Smith dropping in towards the belly gunner goals Niall Warren trying to get a stick to it flicks it back there to a colleague back there is Rory O'Sullivan works it out a little bit still belly gunner under a little bit of pressure the shot half blocked down inside and belly gunner certainly living dangerously but Stephen Frampton gets it right out to the centre comes towards this side of the field very close to Benitez here on the stand in Walsh Park as racing away with the ball is Tony Carroll good control by Tony sending it in towards the goals on my left nicely held inside well held by the corner forward Paul Power Paul brought down the referee weighs play on still Paul Power and eventually the referee blows the whistle deeming that Paul had charged with the ball so it's a free out to the Cork champion Sarsfields certainly referee keeping well up with the play it's Willie Barrett the re match referee stops in the centre nice pull on the ground there by Liam Whitty sends it up towards the corner our Billy O'Sullivan Billy O'Sullivan looks at the post sends it high the umpires look and it's a signal it's a good one it's the fourth point and now there's just two points separating the sides here in Walsh Park in Waterford Kirkland Hartley the team captain and pass it out to his wing back position to be clear there by Liam Whitty a long long delivery by Liam in towards this side of the field good control by Paul Flynn tries to get inside quarterback Brian McCarthy still Paul Flynn bearing down the goals the shot is blocked down the first time the shot is second time it's gone to the back of the net Paul Flynn the scorer he scored one eight in the Waterford hurling final now let's watch him again as he came in on the left hand side the initial shot blocked down by the defender Paul getting the second by the cherry and Tyke Murphy he was left stranded in the goals Niall Warren gets the ball right out the centre Waterford coming more and more into the game as we watch the midfielder racing away with the ball that's Liam Whitty Liam sending it in this looks good one it stops inside in the front of the goalkeeper Tyg Murphy shot locked down there's players rushing in there and the referee I think is going to decide the result of that one because it looks 6-1 to one, half doesn't have another the referee decides he'll throw it in Willie Barrett throws in passed across there to Billy O'Sullivan from Darrow O'Sullivan from one O'Sullivan to another and it's Billy as I said, the ageless warrior Billy O'Sullivan has the shot and it's gone over the bar. He may be playing for a long time, but I think Billy is only 28 and that's 1-5 for Billy Gunner and they're extending their lead here in Walsh Park. Stephen Frampton. Tries to race in there is John Barry. Sends the ball in towards the wing forward, John Barry. Bearing down on goals, gets it right across in towards the midfield of a shot on the ball in the back of the net. A great goal by Tyg Oglin. Tyg Oglin getting the goal and now reducing the deficit let's watch it again sent across by John Barry into the position of the number nine Ty Gold Lynch giving goalkeeper Ray Whitty no chance 29 minutes and 18 seconds gone in the first half of the Munster Club Championship as Niall Warren tries to work that ball out Fergal Hartley has it in the hand and the referee awards the free referee going back and going to indicate a free in to Sarsfields of Cork as the free here is taken by I go Lynch, sending it over and it's just two points now separating the tides. It's not Ty Gog, it's Pat Ryan, the midfielder, who is now operating in a full forward position. We're into the half-time whistle here, a very close to the half-time whistle as Liam Whitty comes away with the ball. Pass to the centre to his midfield partner, Tom Fives. Tom Fives back to Liam Whitty. Good advantage by the referee. That ball sent in and sent over the bar. And at half-time here in Walsh Park, it's Valley Gunner 1-6. Sarsfields of Cork, 1-3. Dropping on this side of the field. Early stages of the second half of the ball. In there with Fergal Hartley. Well, 
fielded by Fergal, tries to drop it up towards the centre forward, Mike, Mick Mahoney breaks outside, I see Waterford men has a sub on, that's uh, Conor Sweeney on the Waterford team, as the ball breaks inside, the shot by the midfielder, Lee Whitty, has been sailing over the bar, and Waterford champions, actually Tony Carroll was who got it, and it's a four point lead now for Belly Gunner, thanks to Tony Carroll, that's Liam Whitty, shot blocked down inside, sent out by Conor McCarthy, Racing across to this side of the field, another McCarthy, that's Teddy. Teddy McCarthy looks at the pose, looks a good one, and it is a good one. Teddy McCarthy has got his name on the scoreboard, the blue and white flags of stars wave around Walsh Park. Paul Flynn with the free, that's the angle. The shot is not a good one, in towards the corner, sent in towards. Mick Mahoney picked up nicely inside, hand pass it out by Mick, across the goal as it went, but it's well read by the wing back, David Higgins. And David lofting it up towards the opposite 45 metre line. Across the centre from Brian O'Callaghan. Coming across, two Waterford men, Fergal Hartley is one of them. He gets possession, holds possession nicely, that's the centre half back, Fergal. Stopping it towards the opposite 30 metre line. Waterford still holding possession, that's with Tony Carroll, Tony with the shot, and Tony with the point. And the men from the Ballygunner and Waterford champions extend their lead still further. Nice sideline cut, cut inside with seven and a half minutes gone. A shot of the ball in the back of the net. A well taken goal for Ballygunner. Maybe well worth watching again. I think the man to get to it was the corner forward. The ball bounced inside. He pulled it the first time. And yes, it's Paul Flynn to put the ball in the back of the net. That's Pat Ryan. Long free by pass. Held towards in towards Teddy McCarthy. Didn't get to it. Niall Warren tried to get a stick to it. Out comes goalkeeper Ray Whitty. But the ball gone off the stick of the defender or goalkeeper at the expense of a 65. A little bit of pressure there on the water for defence. From the resultant 65 by Pat Ryan. This one looks good and it is good. Pat Ryan so accurate in the war for, uh, for the Cork champions, so influential in the Cork uh, final as well. As the wing back there, David Higgins. Battled up a little bit, tries to get it in towards the middle, towards Pat Ryan. Coming forward is Tom Fives. Nice pass outside towards Paul Flynn. And Paul, hands on the hip, happy that he has put his side a further point ahead. Sideline cut, Conor McCarthy. Won by the wing forward, Brian O'Callaghan. That's Rory O'Sullivan. Very close to the sideline, got over the line. Lies on the opposite side of the field there. The man who refereed the Tipperary hurling final on last Sunday week, that's Michael Cahill. And here's the sideline cut coming in from John Considine. Picked up nicely by Tom Fives. Racing back to cover, the wing back Higgins loses out to wing forward Billy O'Sullivan, the tearaway number 10, flicks it back nicely, players calling for it. Wonderful team to have men in numbers there and that ball is sent sailing over the bar but Billy O'Sullivan there drawing out the defenders, getting it to a colleague and Tony Carroll makes no mistake, and that's Tony Carroll's successfully on the second occasion there, a quick succession. As Tony Carroll again chasing over that one. With Conor McCarthy. Tony Carroll drifted in low. Maybe there's another goal on here for Waterford. Paul Flynn right across the centre. A shot, a great save by the goalkeeper. An excellent save by Tyke Murphy. And the, the Sars defence under a little bit of pressure. They get head out there through Pat Smith, their captain. Only comes out towards... Billy O'Sullivan, 21 minutes gone in the second half. And the Cockconians there living rather dangerously. They eventually get the ball. Let's watch that shot again. It came in from across the sw small parallelogram. Hit there by, I think, Sweeney, the substitute, and saved by the goalkeeper, Tig Murphy. Wing forward is John Barry. Out to the Cork sub, O'Callaghan. Here now, defence somehow by Ballygunner. 
Nice hand pass there by Paul Powell. Liam Whitty. Dropping it up towards the corner. Miss hit there and Mick Mahoney will get it for uh, Bally Gunner. Mick out on the sideline. Tries a shot from an acute angle and it's gone over the end line and wide. Supporter today, a player tomorrow, that's Matt, that damn man there. But this man now sends that ball in, that's Pat Ryan. The ball drops inside towards Teddy McCarthy. Trying for a last ditch effort for the men from Cork. And there's a foul there on their sub. John O'Flynn and it's the free end to the Cork champions. Pat Ryan with a very crucial free. Will Pat go for the goal? His team trailing by eight points. Pat defending, lifting shot, and it's gone to the back of the net. Pat Ryan, the scorer. And certainly that goal may, may bring some ray of hope to Sarsfield. They now trail by just five points. An excellent taken goal by Pat Ryan with 25 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Dripped outside there towards the sub, Connor Sweeney. Sweeney inside towards uh, Mick Mahoney. Mick Mahoney with a shot of the ball in the back of the net. A good reply for Waterford, thanks to Mick Mahoney. And certainly Mick, who set a crucial part in the county final, is playing his part here in the Munster Club Championship game as well. The long pass to Mick Mahoney from Sweeney. And Mahoney knew where the goals were. He knew that it put his side further ahead. Nice pick up on this side of the field by the man who scored the goal for uh, Sarsfield, Pat Ryan. Pulls it up towards the centre, racing away there to get the score that ball gone in and gone over the bar despite the best efforts there of Ray Whitty coming from the stick of Pat Gahan number 20 29 minutes gone in the second half of the Munster Club championship game between Bally Gunner and Sars as the shot is sent in low saved by the goalkeeper an excellent save by Ray Whitty from the stick of Conor O'Leary blocked inside and the referee awards the free out he's penalised the Hawk attack and the referee calls for the ball, it's all over. And so at full time here in Walsh Park, Valley Gunner progress to meet the fair champion. Valley Gunner 3-11, that's the Cork 2-7. Well, I think you'll agree it's fair to say that the start of the Clare football renaissance began with victory in the All-Ireland B Football Championship back in 1991. A year later, the banner under John Mohan created a major upset when defeating Kerry in the Munster final at Limerick's Gaelic grounds. Clare were back in the All-Ireland B final at the weekend and opposing them in the final were loud. Our commentator in Banslow was Mal Evening. It was way back in 1957 that Louth won their last All-Ireland Senior Football title, that at the expense of Cork. They're hoping to bridge a 40-year gap, so here in Banlaslow this afternoon. Gareth O'Neill is the team captain, he slots in at full-back. Brian Phillips is at centre-half back, while Paul Kelly links up with Jerry Kern at midfield. Stephen Millay is included at centre-half forward, while Cahill O'Hanlon, the very talented player, is at full forward. Meanwhile, Clare, who were victorious a few seasons back, once again have John O'Keefe as their team manager. Dennis O'Driscoll is a late absentee of their team, and his place now goes to Portrick Gallagher of Dunebeg. Referee for this All-Ireland B Football Championship final, hail to Monaghan, that's Pat McAnini, and it's Clare playing right to left to the first half. Peter Cosgrave now for Clare, putting it up that far wing. Aidan Daly holding up play, playing it inside neatly now for the Bannermen going inside. Troubling the full back line already of the Clare attack, and referee has spotted an infringement and is awarded the free to Clare, so an early scoring opportunity for them. Goalkeeper is Niall O'Donnell. Here comes the free taker onto that left boot, dropping it in towards the goal. No mistake about it that occasion. That's a good start for Clare. They lead by just one point. Jarkeen on the mark. They go through the 45, the 65. Clare running into something of a cul-de-sac, looking for support, and it's broken favourably for Louth. And they won the free. They're thinking about taking the quick shot. Delivered inside towards good ball territory, but it's well intercepted. That was a foolish move on the part of Louth, as it's Clare through. Alan Malone that are coming out with their defence. Down towards the full forward line. Louth covering well. David Brennan in possession. Swinging play upfield. Finding a colleague as well. That's Stephen Malay. Malay delivered inside. Well brought down as well by Cahill O'Hanlon. This is Stephen White. Shot and that's a point. Stephen White from Clannogail. The teams are level in the early part of the match. Stephen White and Cahill O'Hanlon and Alan Doherty. A quite a formidable full forward line. There again, trying to build it from the heart of their own defence, tossing it outside to Charles O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin onto the right boot and swinging in infield. Coming across the brief this for Louth, is their centre half back. 
fullback, in fact, Gareth O'Neill, who also links up as the team captain. There is support behind, but it comes now towards Pat McMahon. McMahon inside, here comes the chance. Shot! Oh, it's gone to the right and wide. Jerk Keane had a goal in his mercy. Niall O'Donnell, I think, wouldn't have stopped it, but in the end, the shot went to the right and wide. Now putting Louth into attack again towards Cotter O'Hanlon. Holding up there, head of Frankie Griffin. This is O'Hanlon looking for support, chipping it now towards Stefan White. Instead, it's now Ollie McDonald. McDonald, quick shot. That's a rapid fire point. And the wing forward for Louth. Up against Charles O'Loughlin this afternoon. Oh, slow. That's nice play by Claire. Picking up with Martin Daly. Daly putting it towards the opposite side of the field, trying to seek out Johnny Inright. Instead, it's David Brennan that reads the situation best of all. And his handing left him down, so it presents Johnny Inright and Claire with a sideline kick, which they take rather smartly. Inside now to Jerk Keane. Keane has Aidan Daly outside. He's got opposite set to give it towards Donald O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan hand passing it back. It's still very much alive for Claire. And yet another freeze. So Claire have a second opportunity from a place ball situation to move ahead. Aidan Daly was certainly grounded as he headed towards goal. Onto the left boot again, looking for point number two and finding it as well. Jarkin's second point, so the teams are level at two points at least. There with his free from their own defence, gathered here by Gareth O'Neill. Now from the attacking 65, right booted kick all the way inside towards full forward area. He has the chance, can he finish? He certainly can. Yes, the full forward line certainly making quite an impression in this match. Carla Hanlon now on the score sheet. Here with a free. Brendan Luan taking that fairly shortly. Didn't work out all that well. And now it's Colin Kelly for Louth trying to go inside. Brendan Luan held up. There is support behind with Ali McDonald, but still he holds off play now. This is aimed towards Stephen Malig. Breaks favourably inside for his colleague, who's Stefan White. White beautifully interchanging now with Ollie McDonald. McDonald looking for another point. It's curling in. Drop shot of the goal, however. And James Hanrahan is the alert goalkeeper for Clare the far sideline towards Colin Kelly who was fouled Barry Keating team captain of the clear side playing it right half back quick play now by Clare moving themselves right into attacking position now to Gareth O'Neill goes to the near sideline this is Jerry Kern in possession goes to the near sideline playing it up the corner towards Pull forward Carl O'Hanlon, who seems to switch positions now with Stefan White. This is O'Hanlon. Now it's Stefan White, the chance, and that's gone to the right and wide. Well, he's been closed down all the time as he prepared to take his shot. He's not quite happy with that. And Stefan White, a man that's played Railway Cup football for Leinster. Alan Doherty now picking up the pieces. Hello. So a little bit too much of it, perhaps, to the clear defence. He works out okay, however. And now Stefan White to make amends. A long way out from the goal, Carling, and that's a beautiful, beautiful point by Stefan White. And so Louth engineering themselves with a two-point lead at the moment, four points to two. Declan O'Sullivan, the player that likes to come forward from the half-back line. Rounding Dennis O'Driscoll, dropping it inside. It's broken outside and Clare have it now. Full-back Frankie Griffin. As far as the 45 it comes, Stephen Malay. Leaving it go for his colleague, who's Charles, o who's Anthony Coey, and towards the goal, it's brought down as well. Here comes the shot, and that's right and wide. Well, really, a hat full of chances gone a begging for Louth. Paulo had an off target on that occasion. It surely should be. These maybe four or five points clear of their opponents. Now Stephen White has lost possession, and it's clear they're picking up the pieces. Going forward past midfield. This is very good play. Now Martin Daly. Daly to Don Lo Sullivan. Back to Daly. Left foot a kick. Drop short. Finds his intended target. They're on the 30 meter line. And the referee has spotted that there's going to be a free. Just outside of the large parallelogram. So it can just be a free and not a penalty. Martin Daly anxious to take this one himself. When Claire within striking distance. Surely going for the point is Daly. It's high and it's straight over the crossbar as well. In between those uprights, and so at half time, Clare move within one point of Louth, five points to four. Into the second half, and Clare moving into attack again on the 45. Support is needed. Maybe come from outside, which it does. Now, this is Dunlo Sullivan. 40 yard yards out from the goal. He's trying for the pot. In it goes. It's close, and it's very accurate. 
That's a wonderful, wonderful start of the second half for Clare. Still within striking distance of Louth. Martin Daly now for Clare with the free onto that right boot. It's curling in. Is it curling too much? It's a goal! That's a goal for Clare. And really how the game has changed its course. Clare now lead by two points. Here we see the high delivery again from Martin Daly. Rising high to fist the pass. Nyla down on the goal. And so, two points between the teams. And it's Clare that leads. Clare on a high. Number 45. Broken outside, this is full-back Gareth O'Neill now for Louth. Forward it comes towards Colin Kelly, back to O'Neill. O'Neill trying to spread towards the wing, which he does so successfully. And coming into attack now is Jerry Kern. Kern for Louth, has support outside. This is Declan O'Sullivan, shot, and that's gone over the bar. Declan O'Sullivan saw all the way from the heart of the ball defence. He moved upfield, and so Louth have cut the deficit to just one solitary point. And Louth come yet again. They're on the 45. Ollie McDonald still going through. McDonald on the 20s, on the 13. The shot, and that's high, and it's over the bar once again. And so Clare still enjoy the lead, but now it's only one point. Stephen Molina running inside for Stephen White. He's gone inside Frankie Griffin with the full back. The angle is getting tighter all the time. Onto the left boot. It's going to be close. It's kept in play. Been impeded by Charles O'Loughlin. No free since the referee Carl O'Hanlon now for Louth, keeping it very much alive. Anywhere will do it, Stinton now towards Colin Kelly. Kelly to Stephen White, the shot, that's a goal. A goal by Stephen White. Well, we thought the, the opportunity was gone for Louth, but the wee county will they've now score the goal. Colin Kelly inside towards Stephen White. The goalkeeper advanced the yard or two, but still managed to tuck it underneath the body of James Hanrahan. It's Stephen White. Adrian Hoey now for Louth, onto the left foot, looking for another point, and he finds it as well. And so Louth now dramatically moves three points ahead of Clare. One goal and nine to one goal and six. It's the Leinster boys that are doing all the attacking at the moment. Stephen White, now to Declan O'Sullivan. What a talented player, O'Sullivan inside, off the upright it comes. Carl Hanley was the player that rose highest of all. Clear at sixes and sevens, eventually winning the free. Here it comes, rising high was Carl O'Hanna. It was a good strike by him. Unfortunately for him, it came off the crossbar. Keeps Clare's chances alive. Colin Kelly for Louth. Now Alan Doherty. It comes back towards Kelly. Thought about the shot. Now he threads it inside, left foot, a kick towards Doherty. Doherty's shot, brilliant save by James Hattenham. And there is support there as well in the clear defence. Well, suddenly, in a matter of moments, Louth could well have added two more goals to their tally. Brian Phillips tossing it behind. Now it's drilled forward. Stephen Millay. This is Colin Kelly onto the right foot. And that's a delightful score by the wing forward. Four points between them now. And so is a 40-year gap about to be bridged here in Ballinasloe on this rather dull afternoon. Clear and Martin Daly. Gareth O'Neill committing the foul. At Martin Daly with a short free. It's returned to Daly. He's thinking about the goal, but he sent it to the right and right. Well, one more else should he have it over the crossbar to leave just three points between them. Rising high. It's clear now finishing strong in this second half. Aidan Daly inside to the substitute. That's Cordrick Gallagher. Gallagher again. The shot in towards the goal. And that's the point. It cuts it down. To a score that's quite manageable now for Clare. The free is checking his watch. The loud supporters are anticipating that they are within sight of victory. It sounded now, and there it is. Louth are the All Ireland B football champions. And a final scoreline of Louth 1 11, Clare 1 goal and 8. Well, next to the last of the county finals, where in Clare, the pairing was that of Clare Castle and St. Joseph's Dora Bearfield. Favourites, Clare Castle, of course, included Anthony Daly in their selection. St. Joseph's were aiming to bridge a 39-year gap, but the castle were all keyed up to secure a ninth county title. 
Pat Healy and the Sheedy brothers of Martin and Stephen in defence have excelled in 1997. In the semi-final win, Ken Ralph hit an impressive one goal and five points to underline his ability as an attacker. Jer Sparrow O'Loughlin makes a surprise return from his honeymoon to figure on the Clare Castle selection. The favourites are trained by Roger McMahon. St. Joseph's are hoping that a 39-year stint in the wilderness will come to an end at Cusick Park. The launching pad of their victories this year have centred on their half-back line, where team captain Kieran O'Neill and Larkin Hassett have been outstanding. The Baker brothers of Ollie and Greg, along with sharpshooter James e. O'Connell, make up a side with plenty of skill and craft. And certainly, the St. Joseph side got off to a better start with this opening point by Larkin Hassett. The aforementioned Ollie Baker was very influential in setting up the second score for St. Joseph's. His accuracy to pick out the free Nile Brody gave St. Joseph's a two-point lead after five minutes. This is St. Joseph's first surge upfield as Fergus Tuhi drops the ball goalward. We go to join match commentator Liam O'Brien. A great save by Patsy Fahey. A great save by Fahey from Kin Ralph. The Sparrow sends it back in. This is Ralph again. Ralph strikes it high, but it's got to the left and wide. Colin Mullen in position, who was a member of that fair team who won the All Ireland final. Dangerous ball as it drops inside. John Casey gets a stick to it, and it's gone out for a 65. St. Joseph's are playing with the aid of the breeze in the first half. For Plunkett and Gerward, they're discussing tactics as Sean McMahon strikes it high and sends it straight between the holes. And Sean, for the minute he left his stick, he knew it was going straight over. And Sean McMahon gets a stick to it. Sean McMahon and Alan Neville clash. Robert Fitzgerald in position. The referee has penalised him that he played the ball on the ground, so it's going to be a free to St. Joseph's. 55 metres from his own goal. Sean McMahon didn't get as much distance as he would have wished into that one. Ali Baker tries to get a stick to it. Ball breaks out to Jamesy O'Connor. Jamesy hooked by James Healy. Jamesy gets it at the second attempt, strikes it in, and sends it up straight between the poles. So Jamesy's first score of the game. No Brody for St. Joseph's. Brings it over this side, Anthony Daly gets a stick to it, won't come up, it's not a day for jabbing with one hand, this is Jamesy O'Connor, Jamesy from the 45, swings it in and Jamesy sends it straight over the bar, second point by Jamesy O'Connor. Pat Healy jabs it up, dangerous one as it drops inside, Kin Ralph, oh it's a goal! It's a goal for Clare Castle. As the ball came in, Ken Ralph let fly first time. Patsy Pahey, who made a great save early on, seemed to be somewhat unsighted as that one went in over his right shoulder. So that could be the timing that Clare Castle need to get him get the rhythm going. Ball breaks to Greg Baker. James Healy nips in. James O'Connor is also in there trying to gain possession. First time done by Noel Brody. Out comes Jerk Kenny. Plays it off to Pat Healy. Been chased by Andrew Whelan. Still Pat Healy. Boots it upfield. Larkin has it is under it. Can't control it. This is Fergie Tuhi in possession. Tuhi strikes goalwards. Yes, that's a very good point. A very good point by Fergie Tuhi. Anthony Daly with the sideline cut. Well grabbed by Noel Brody. Down towards Sergio O'Sullivan. In nips Anthony Daly, boots it out without the hurley. Larkin has it and Alan Neville tussle for it. Ball breaks to Pat Healy. Over towards Victor Lockton. Victor gains position. Strikes off his left hand side. Well batted away by Jerhoy. Jerhoy first times it down the centre. Stephen Sheedy touches it on to Pat Healy. Up into the corner, there is Sean McMahon. 
Anthony Daly back covering. Stephen Sheedy is also in there for Clarecastle. Seem to take a lot of steps. Well blocked by Fergal O'Sullivan. That's going to be a free end and a bit of argy bargy going on in there. Shawnee McMahon is about to throw in the ball. Greg Baker and Anthony Daly, the two in for it. Anthony Daly comes away with it. Hooped as he tries to get his shot in. Nicely controlled by Noel Brody. Brody gets it in a little. Again there, Anthony Daly is there for Tarkassel. Gerardo Lachlan comes out to it. Been closely marked by Ger Hoey. Good corner back play by Hoey. Down the centre. Anthony Daly is there. Colin Mullen. In towards Sergio Sullivan. Well hooked by Bernard Scanlon. It's cutting up very, very much. Anthony Daly changes direction. Swings it over the far side. Under it is Larkin Hassett. Robert Fitzgerald. Out a long way from his corner forward position. Gets it in the centre. The referee has penalised Sean McMahon. And he has the notebook out there as the pull came from behind. To be a, another switch on this St. Joseph's team. Fergal O'Sullivan has gone to left half forward. And Colin Mullen has gone to the right corner. The free from Ken Ralph. And sends it straight between the poles. So that's a goal and two points for Ken Ralph. Nicely picked up by James Healy. In put under pressure by James e. O'Connor. In nips Dermot Daly. Daly soaring out this side. Well robbed by Fergie Tuhi. Tuhi strikes Goldberg and he sends it straight between the poles. Fergie Tuhi's second point of the game. So Clark Castle have really come back into it. Victor Lockett bats it down. Fergie Tuhi lays it over to Danny Scanlon. In towards Kin Ralph. Oh, the ball breaks inside. This is Sparrow Lachlan. Sparrow with the shot. And it seemed to take a deflection off one of those. I think it was off the stick of Jerhoy and went over the crossbar. Sean McMahon with the free, just inside his own half. Strikes at Goldberg and straight and true, straight between the poles. As the sides go in at half time, it's Clark Castle leading by one point, one goal, and six points to eight points. St. Joseph's with a more promising start, went into a five-point lead, but the goal by Ken Riles brought Clark Castle back into it. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. Ball breaks to Danny Scanlon. Scanlon strikes at goalwards. Kenneth Kennedy comes out. Oh, chance of a goal here. Yes, it's gone in. A mix-up inside between the goalkeeper, Patsy Fahey, and the cornerback, Kenneth Kennedy. And in nips Robert Fitzgerald, a rather fortuitous goal there for Clarkastle. St. Joseph certainly needing a couple of scores. Finn Ralph takes that uncontested from the puck out and returns it straight down and straight over the crossbar. A goal and five points for Finn Ralph. It is Anthony Daly. Clark Castle now beginning to dominate in almost all positions. Oh, and that's floated in by Alan Neville, and that's gone straight over the crossbar. A good point by Alan Neville. That's his first score of the game. Sean McMahon with the free. He's side trailing by six points. McMahon strikes it in, and he sends it straight over the crossbar. Sean McMahon's fifth point of the game. John Casey with the puck out. Picked on by Ken Ralph. This is Robert Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald strikes it in Goldwoods. It looks a good one. Yes, it's gone straight over the bar. That's a goal and a point for Robert Fitzgerald. Sean McMahon with the free. Drops it in. Ali Baker goes high for it. Ball breaks to James O'Connor. James trying to cut his way through. Strikes it in, well blocked inside by John Casey. Goalkeeper did very well there with a slippy wet ball. Sean McMahon falls to the ground, but retains possession. That's a free to St. Joseph's. 
a free to St. Joseph's. Sean McMahon drops in the free, backs and forwards, pulling it inside. Ball is flicked in inside, but the case, uh, keeper, John Casey, does well. Six points between the sides. So certainly it looks as if Clark Castle are about to win their ninth title, and the referee, Johnny McMahon, calls to the ball. And Clark Castle have won their ninth county title, and the score of two goals and 11 points to 11 points. Robert Frost presents the Monsignor Hamilton Trophy to the victorious captain, Martin Sheedy. Joining me is Clark Castle selector Oliver Plunkett and the top scorer in the game, Ken Ralph. Oliver, if I can go to you first. Another great day for the Magpies. Super day for the Magpies. In the replay. Well, now for the rest of the big stories hitting the headlines over the weekend, I'll hand you over to Robert for a Bulmer Sports Roundup. <laughs> Good evening. Once again, tonight we're going to begin with soccer, looking at the FAI Premier Division. And a terrific win for Cork City last weekend over Sligo. They travelled to Sligo and defeated them by two goals to nil. And it was also a win for Bohemians over Shelburne by one goal to nil. And that win by Bohemians over Shelburne now means that Cork City are once again on top of the FAI Premiership. As you can see here by the table, it's the narrowest of margins, Cork City, with 18 points, along with St. Pat's on 18. Then it's Shamrock Rovers who are on 17, followed by Shelburne and Dundalk were both on 16 points and looking ahead to next weekend the fixtures are as follows it's Bohemians who have to travel to Turner's Cross to take on the mighty men of Cork City there that game by the way kicks off at 2 p.m. this weekend other fixtures then as well Derry City play Finn Harps Doherty United and Kilkenny City St. Pat's and Dundalk Shelburne play Shamrock Rovers and UCD play Sligo Rovers and it's the opposite end of the scale for Cove Ramblers. They lost again. This time it was to Monaghan United last Saturday night at St. Coleman's Park. They're rooted firmly at the bottom of the table there. And they once again play Monaghan this weekend in the back-to-back -back clash. But they have to travel up to Monaghan to play them in the league there. And we wish them well. Let's hope they can get back to winning ways. They play Monaghan United away this coming weekend as well. Now, staying with soccer, you had the Opal International Soccer Awards pl uh, taking place at the Burling Hotel last weekend. And at the Burlington, it was a superb win for Roy Keane. He got the overall award there, the Senior Player of the Year. So well done to Roy on that, and we wish him well in his recovery as well. The Youth Player of the Year went to David Connolly of Feyenoord. And David, of course, as you know, is going to be in action tomorrow evening for the Republic of Ireland when they play that crucial game against Belgium, the first of two. And that game can be seen on network to. And the League of Ireland Player of the Year, by the way, went to Derry City's Peter Hutton. So well done to him as well. Now we turn our attention to GAA. Cork representatives Castle Haven defeated Waterford champions the Nair in the opening round of the AIB Munster Club Championship at Friar Field in Dungarvan last weekend. It was Edmund Cleary who pointed after two minutes to give Castlehaven a lead that was never to be threatened. Added points from Alan Crowley, Colin Crowley and Larry Tompkins gave them a five-point lead after only nine minutes of play. But it was Michael Geary who eventually opened the scoring for the Nair after 23 minutes. And with three minutes later, he added a second. But Castlehaven's reply was swift as they shot four points in as many minutes from Martin O'Mahony, Cleary, Alan and Colin Crowley to leave a 10-2 advantage at the break. Cleary then pointed within 30 seconds of the restart and opened a 13-point lead with the first of the two Castlehaven goals in 32 minutes. The second goal came on 45 minutes, fittingly from Colin Crowley, who ended the game with a personal tally of one goal and seven points. To their credit, the Nair battled away and were awarded with two late goals from Bobby Power and substitute Brian Wall in the 54th and 59th minutes, respectively, to give a more respectable look to the scoreboard. But it was Castlehaven who will be more than pleased with their performance as they prepare for Sunday week's county final replay clash with Behram. The final score again here today was Castlehaven 223, the Nair 2 goals and 5. And staying with GAA in the Cork TSP Intermediate Football Championship final, they're going to have to meet again. Of course, I'm speaking about Douglas and Castletown Bear. That game ended, Douglas nine points, Castletown Bear one goal and six. And the replay has yet to be decided. 
But in the Munster Club Hurling Championship replay, Sars and Ballygunner, well, they take on each other again next weekend at Walsh Park in Waterford to try to battle it out there. And in Camogie, well done to the Munster Under-18 Camogie champions, Tipperary. They defeated Cork yesterday after extra time by 18 points to 17. Now, as you probably know, motorsport over the weekend, Jacques Villeneuve was crowned world champion. Michael Schumacher, second, 78 points he finished up with. But the controversy came when Schumacher allegedly tried to push Jacques Villeneuve off the track. But Villeneuve stayed on to finish third overall, which gave him the championship title. So well done to Jacques Villeneuve there. The overall standings for the first, second and third on the day's race itself was Mika Hakkinen, who came in first. Second was David Coulthard, and Jacques Villeneuve came in third there. And Neptune went down for the third consecutive time in the basketball game over the weekend. This time they went down to Notre Dame by a score of 112 to 95 points. Now we'll turn our attention to rugby. And UCC players contributed handsomely when Munster made a winning start in the defense of their under-20 title with a comprehensive 34-15 win over the Exiles at Thoman Park last weekend. The UCC wingers Dara Holt and Rory Collins were in sprightly form for Munster and both scored two tries. Paul Neville of Old Crescent, one of the brightest prospects in the province, also had a try, as did fullback Dermot O'Sullivan of Skerries. The Exiles had tries from Ron Rowlandson of Orel and Dermot Laney of St. Mary's University, with Simon Bond of Richmond kicking a penalty, and one of the tries was converted by George Coletta. But the final score again here has to go to Munster. It was 34 to 15 in their favour. And now we'll turn our attention to golf, and Paul McGinley joined the Millionaires Club after securing the second European Tour victory of his career by winning the Oki Pro-Am last weekend. It was held in Madrid. He earned for that win £75,000, and he finished 69 with a 72-hole aggregate of 266. He was 22 under par, so well done to Paul McGinley there. And finally, we go to vetting with local bookmaker Liam Cashman. The Republic of Ireland at 6 to 4, Belgium are at 7 to 4 and it's 2 to 1 a draw. Russia at 13 to 8, Italy at 13 to 8 and it's 2 to 1 a draw. Croatia are at 7 to 4 on, Ukraine at 9 to 2 and it's 9 to 4 a draw. While Hungary are at 11 to 5, Yugoslavia 11 to 10 and it's 2 to 1 a draw. In GAA, the Cork County Intermediate Hurling final over 60 minutes, Delaney's 6 to 5 on, Cloyne 11 to 10 and it's 10 to 1 a draw. And in the 98 Premiership to win outright, Manchester United 11 to 8, Arsenal are at 5 to 2, and Liverpool are at 4 to 1. While in the FAI Premiership to win outright, Shelburne at 3 to 1, St Pat's at 7 to 2, Cork City at 7 to 2, Shamrock Rovers at 4 to 1, Bohemians and Derry City are both on 7 to 1, Dundalk at 10 to 1, and it's Sligo who are on 16 to 1. And that's my lot. Let's go back to Trevor. <laughs> Well, that's very much about it from Sports Night. Before we leave it, just to remind you that our next sport here on the local channel is uh, tomorrow evening for the Monster Game. When included in the action, we have uh, another chance to look at that uh, Sars Ballet Gunner game in the Monster Club Hurling Championship. And in the Monster Club Football Championship, you can see highlights of the Castle Haven game. All that and much more on the Monster Game tomorrow evening. And we have, of course, Sports Night back again on Friday with Gerald, Robert and myself. Hope you can join us for all of that from the team here in George's Key for this evening. Bye-bye. and Electrical has pulled out all the stops to bring you the biggest and best superstore in Cork. Phones, computers, hi-fi, TV, video, kitchen, white goods. We've even got the garden covered. All at prices only a Flaw Griffin Superstore could give you. With all the big brand names and after-sale service that's second to none. Who else could bring you all this but Flaw Griffin Superstore, Parnell Place, Cork. 23 hours ago, Alexander Korderov stole 10 nuclear warheads. Do not take action without authorization. Only one man. Get me authorized!
can stop the terror. The guy got away with a bomb. We have a weapon of mass destruction coming into the United States. George Clooney, Nicole Kidman. It's not our war. It is now. The Peacemaker. You've been watching The Local Channel, a part of the Irish Multi-Channel Network. Rafe Downs, my last golden oldie for this series, playing Bach's Wachid Alf. Now it's time I played for you. Here's an improvisation on themes from West Side Story. Mm -hmm. 